is a good overview of different saddles, so you can create saddles for all sorts of different mounts. This creature here is one that I made up myself, called an Umbral Steed. It's meant to be easy to ride and a beautiful fantasy mount. It's part of my project in Magiscria, and also meant to be used as a D&D mount. The original design is from a fairy realm. They are linked to people and magically summoned. They speak and are intelligent and have various personalities. The spell that summons one will summon the ideal one that volunteered to be on a summoning list. So the one who summoned them's aura, personality, goals, and etc. will mesh well with the mount that they summon. This is a digital paint over I did of a photo I took of an older line art I did because I figured this was a really good mount to show to show the different types of saddles. Having various colorations, many have jewel tone eyes and various mammal-like colorations, including different stripes. Some could have pale stripes over dark or dark stripes over pale. There's also different varieties of different sizes, so a smaller one, a more horse-sized one for human-sized people to ride, and even larger ones for things like giants to ride. So the different varieties allow different summoners to actually bond with these creatures. Intentionally designed to be a mix of horse and antelope, I decided to keep the back and body far more horse-like for the reason I already listed, so that it can be ridden more like a horse and so that saddles can fit on it very easily. If you're using it for Dungeons and Dragons, basically just use the war horse stats, but then just say it's this creature. Also remember to give them high charisma and intelligence, because they are smarter than the average horse. I also like to give them various magical powers that they gain as they level up based on the level of the one they're bonded with, so they have a level restriction based on the power of the person they're bonded with. So if you don't play Dungeons and Dragons, basically you start at a lower level and go up in levels, and if you're doing a paladin that summons a mount or another character that can do that, you can have this creature get some magical powers as it gets to a higher level linked with the one who summoned it. I advise creating your own mythical creatures to use for mounts and stories rather than, you know, having everything just be plain old horses. When designing a mount, try to think about how comfortable it would be to ride and the functionality of how its body moves. So try to make sure it doesn't have anything that makes it very difficult to ride. And if you do make it more difficult to ride in design, you have to adapt the saddle to fit the mount in a way so that its body can still move and the person can ride on the back without hurting themselves too much did the English saddle because I think I made the side flaps too long and more like the dressage saddle but I didn't actually include that in the video because for some reason the recording of that messed up so um, basically these saddles are more for short distance or fast riding the Western saddle is different Western saddle is more for working and riding longer distance it's not designed for epic long voyages as much as for working as a cowboy or cowgirl and for transportation it is able to be used for long distance travel, however. It also has a saddle horn, which is used to tie the ropes to of other animals. So, for example, a cow that's been roped can be tied to the saddle horn of the horse or other mount. There are also metal loops to attach saddle bags and other baggage. A western saddle is a good base for a fantasy saddle, but there's actually one that's probably a little bit better later on. For this painting here, I did add some designs on the leather to make it look like there's actually tooling and designs in the leather itself using stamp brushes and just painting it in. And I also did use specialized brushes to do the plants in the background, just as an aside. This is the Endurance Saddle. It's actually properly designed for long distance and comfortable travel and has the most padding. It has a lot of metal loops for adding on baggage and luggage, and it's made to be comfortable. It doesn't have a saddle horn for tying things to, because it's made more for riding and not for working with additional animals. So remember to use the saddle as a starting point that is most similar to the task you're making the rider do, as well as the world you're on and just the aesthetics you like. So make sure at the end of the day, it fits the look and feel you want for your character, your mount, your world. But make sure it's still functional. I'm saying find a balance. The Aussie saddle is just what it sounds like, an Australian version of a saddle that's used by the cowfolk, so it also lacks the saddle horn, but is another version of a slightly more comfortable saddle for working in. So as you can see, there's still a variety of saddles in the real world, so use that as a good reference before designing your own saddles. Also remember, there's a strap underneath attaching the saddle around the girth of the creature, so you have to include a way of attaching the saddle to the creature. The Iberian saddle is from Europe. 
more specifically the Iberian Peninsula, which is Spain and Portugal. There's also more saddles in this, including the very spare racing saddle and other things that you can look up as well in your own. So I just thought I'd do some of the saddles here to show people a good overview. Now here is the halter and the reins. So there's also a bit and bridle version that puts a painful metal bit in the mouth to control the mount. I prefer bitless halters and implying that the mount is intelligent or well trained enough that they don't require a painful way to steer them. The cinch is the correct term for the leather belt strap that ties it to it and to remember that you need a stirrup usually to show where the foot of the rider or the feet rather will actually hold to the saddle. So it's important to have these different saddle pieces and gear parts in order to create a convincing setup that would actually work. So think about functionality, do the research on the real thing, and then apply it to the fantasy. So here I got a photograph of some old line art of a lion and a lion-based dragon I did. So a lioness, so a female lion. And I just quickly painted her in and did a little background. And I decided I'm gonna show an example of a fantasy saddle adapted to the mount. So it's important to get it to be functional and aesthetically appealing. For this lioness, I mostly use the old round brush in Procreate to do most of it, but I also use some other brushes, the ultimate brush I downloaded and some specialty plant brushes to create a background. I ended up using the same background for the dragon really quick so I could save a bit of time. Besides, I liked how this background turned out. As you can see, I lined it in and I designed it so that it would be functional. This is probably assuming the mounted person is a small size to fit on a lion. So something like a goblin or a halfling or a kobold or a gnome or any other halfling or small size race would do just fine. It's also important to get the materials of the saddle represented well. So I tried to paint everything in so it looked more like it was made of the material it was made out of and I used certain texture brushes to help in the case of some of the fabrics can also make things dressier as well by adding in tooling, designs, scroll work, and things as well. So the halter attachment is also particularly important when you have a trained mount that can battle. So I would always put the halter attachment on something that can bite because you want that creature to be able to bite in a battle, not have its mouth unable to be used. So think of things like that. So this is a dragon with its anatomy primarily based on the lion, and you can see how its anatomy is mostly based on the lioness from before, but then it's changed into a dragon. You can take anatomy from various creatures to help create dragons. Here I went over with a lizard scale brush I made custom in Procreate by modifying a photo of a public domain image of a close-up of lizard scales. I also used mostly the round brush and a few other brushes to help paint in this dragon. I put the scales on a multiply layer and lowered the opacity and that's how they have that sort of see-through scale look. And then on top, I have a top layer where I painted opaquely on a regular mode to get lots of details in. For the stripes, I used a specialty brush. I forget which one right now. And I put it on a multiply layer underneath the scale layer, but above the base color layer. So using layers properly in Procreate can save you a lot of time and hassle. I advise you look into the proper way of using layers and think about it a bit rather than just putting everything all in one layer. If the separate layers help you out, you should probably use them. So when you're painting in fur, remember that there should be a shadow and a highlight and the form of the fur is more of a large clump than individual hairs. So if you think of it more as a form and a large clump, that should be a little better. So I have everything worked out for the dragon and I went and I inked this in. Now I put a bit of an armor plate on the head, but I made sure that its mouth could still bite and that it could still see clearly. I also made longer reins and I explain in a theory of a reason later, although I didn't fully put it in. I created this saddle here and short reins would work, but maybe if the dragon isn't as intelligent, you wanna tie it up. But if it's intelligent, you don't need to forcefully direct it because it can think for itself. You just need to hold on. So you can think of how to do a design based on the logic of the creature in the scenario. An idea I had for using long reins is if you had a second saddle behind the wings on the back, so you could have a rear rider or additional luggage, that would be an additional option. Here's where I erased the background and turned off all the layers to save it as a see-through uh, PNG, which means you can reuse that dragon in another artwork later and do a different background. You can paint over it and do things like create different armor designs and saddles and stuff, and jewelry. At any rate, I'm so sorry this video is late again. Everything got behind schedule and now I keep releasing videos on Sunday for some reason. I'm gonna try to get back on track next week, but I've been having some issues in my real life. 
Still, I hope everyone enjoys this video and is looking forward to more videos soon. Alright, bye!